Now that you know what's a linked list and have a high level idea of its potential, let me guide you through implementing it in JavaScript. For this video, I'll implement a single linked list and go step by step on how everything works. First, I create my class, which I call linked list, and inside I create my size and head properties, as well as the getter for is empty, which returns if the size is equal to zero. Now for the first operation, I will implement the push, which takes an element and adds it to the end. But first, I need to be able to create a node. So I'll create a method that takes an element and returns an object containing the element and a pointer next, which I initialize to be null at start. Now back to push method, I create my node and I have to handle two cases. If the list is currently empty or the head node is null, I'll set the head to be the node we just created. Helps I'll traverse the list starting from the head, looking for the last node, which will have next pointer null and then set the node next pointer to the node we just created. And just like that, it will be part of the list. So I set a current to be the head. And while the current next is not null, I'll update current with the next. And once it comes upon the first node with the null next, it will quit the loop and current will be the last node. So I just update the next pointer to point to the node we just created. After this, I'll increment the size and return it. I want to try this, but first I'll implement two string methods so we can see the list. If there is no size yet, I'll return an empty string. Then I'll create a string containing the head element. A loop while i is less than the size minus one. And inside I update my current with the next node and concat current element node to the string. And finally return the string. Now I'm ready to try this. So I'll instantiate it and console log the two string result, which will be empty. And now I can push few items and see that is correctly adding new elements after the last one. To better see the inside, I'll create the print method also, which will print the nodes. Uh, and inside I create an array. And if there is a size, I create a current that starts at the head. And similarly to the two string method, I'll loop while I is less than size and keep changing my current with the next and push the node to the array. Finally, I just log the array. Now, if I call the print method, I see my list and you can see that each node has the next pointer set to the next node in the list and the last node next is null. And this is what an open linked list is. Now, let's make it so it's possible to insert a new element at any position with the insert method. This method takes the, an element and index which I'll initialize to zero in case it's not specified. So by default, it always adds new elements to the beginning. For this one, I want to make sure the index is not negative or greater than the size, and I'll just return false if so. For the insert, I have to handle two situations. Whether the insertion is at zero index, where I'll make the new node point to the head, meaning it will come before the current head, and also set it as the new head. Otherwise, I want to loop starting from the head until the position before where I want to make my insertion and point the node at that position to the new node and make the new node point to the node which the node at that position was pointing to. So if index is zero, I'll make this the node point at the current head, then set the head to be the new node. Otherwise, I'll create a previous variable which represents the previous element before the element at the position I want to insert my new node. Similarly, I loop while the i is less than the index minus one and updating previous. Then I'll set new node to point to the node previous was pointing to and make previous point to the new node. Then I'll increment my size and return true. Now if I try this, I can insert a node at the start to see. Also node at the end using the size and some more in the middle and it's all good. Now I want to be able to get an item at a certain index. So I'll create a get method which takes an index and similarly I want to check a couple of things first. If the index is not undefined or negative or not greater or equal than the size. Next, if index is zero, I can just return the head. I'll loop as I've been doing and then return the current element. Now I can try this. As you can see, I'm able to see elements at the index I specify. But I want to refactor things, so I'll copy all of this in the get method and put in the get node at method where I return current. And in the get, I'll call get node and return the element from the result. 
This way I can use the get node at inside the insert method since I am repeating the same thing at this point, as well as inside the push method. And this method will continue to prove very useful as we continue these implementations. Now I only have to implement the remove method. And similarly, I do my index check and return null if true. Then I create my remove node to be the head to start. And inside here, I have to do two checks. If the index to remove is the index of the head, I simply set what the current head is pointing to as the new head. Otherwise, I get the node at the position before where I want to remove and using my get node at method and passing index minus one and store it in the previous variable. And I set remove node to be the one previous is pointing to. Then I make previous point to the node that the remove node was pointing at. Finally, I decrement my size at time and return remove node. I can play with this by trying to remove the first node, then the last node, and finally another in the middle, and it's all good. Another nice to have is the index off method that takes an element and returns its position, which is pretty easy. I first set my current to be the head, and if the element is equal to the head element, I return zero. Otherwise, I'll loop while i is less than the size, updating current, and I'll quit the loop as soon as any node element match the element by returning the current index. Finally, I return negative one to show I did not find anything. Now that I have the index off, I can add the contains method that uses the index off and returns the true if index result is not negative one. Now for my final check, I query for index of couple items and use the contains to check items as well. All good, fun stuff. So if you want to know how to store or make this linked list doubly or circular, check links below and let's continue having fun with these implementations. Once again, thanks for watching. See you next one. Bye-bye.